Hello guys, this is Hitesh from MATLAB Helper. Today I welcome you to this live webinar on Raspberry Pi with MATLAB and Simulink. First let me walk you through the content of this webinar. In this webinar, we will first try to understand a bit more about what is Raspberry Pi. Then we move on to answering the question of why this webinar on Raspberry Pi. After we are done answering the question, we will try to understand what are support packages and how to download them. Later, we move on to setup and customization of operating system. Now we get to the coding part where we begin by executing some basic commands. Later, we move on to lighting an LED with these commands. After we understand the output mode of GPIO pins by lighting an LED, we move to the next part that is input mode of GPIO pins using a PIR sensor. In this part of the webinar, we'll try to understand what is a PIR sensor and we'll also follow a script for detecting motion using the PIR sensor. After we are done using MATLAB, we repeat the operating LED and PIR sensor, but instead of MATLAB commands, this time we use Simulink blocks. Now, let me answer the question. What is Raspberry Pi? Raspberry Pi is a microcontroller, just like 8051 Arduino, but it has enough processing power to replace a CPU in a system which is why it is known as a credit card size computer. It has very high processing power for a microcontroller. This is used in high-end projects like projects related to image processing and artificial intelligence. Next, let me answer the question, why this webinar on Raspberry Pi? There are two reasons. First, when I was in my final year, I didn't actually know that MATLAB could be interfaced with hardware like Arduino, Raspberry Pi and all. So when I joined this company, I gained a lot of knowledge regarding MATLAB that MATLAB can be interfaced with hardware. MATLAB, MATLAB is like the capabilities of MATLAB are literally limitless. So this is one reason that I want to share this knowledge this new phone knowledge with you guys that hardware can be interfaced using MATLAB. And the second reason is our team has already worked on Arduino recently and taking it to a next level, the next thing we can work on is Raspberry Pi. So taking these two reasons into consideration, we have made this webinar on Raspberry Pi. So without any further delay, let's move on to the next part that is support packages. Before we start how to download the support packages, let us first understand what are support packages. Support packages are files that are required for establishing a proper communication with Raspberry Pi and also the packages which help in controlling the Raspberry Pi. These support packages can be downloaded from MATLAB itself. To download these support packages, first click on add-ons and in the drop-down menu, click on get hardware support packages. You can see this new window, Add-ons Explorer. On the right hand side, you can see a search bar. Click on the search bar and start typing Raspberry Pi and then click on enter. As you can see, the first results you find are MATLAB support packages for Raspberry Pi hardware and Simulink support packages for Raspberry Pi hardware. First, let us download the MATLAB support packages. So, 
first click on MATLAB support packages for Raspberry Pi hardware. Since I've already installed the support packages, it looks something like this. If you have already installed, you'll find a similar window in your system. If you have not yet installed the support packages, then you'll notice an install button in the place of manage button over here. Let's click on install and the installation will begin. We need not do anything else in here. To download Simlink support packages for Raspberry Pi hardware, follow the same steps and install the support packages if you have not yet installed these support packages. For the people who have already installed these support packages, they need not install them again and just skip this step. We are done with installing the support packages and before we move into the next part, I would like to inform you guys about the quiz and contests. MATLAB Helper organizes regular quiz and contests. We have been doing this since 2018 where we started running contests for promoting MATLAB capability awareness among our followers. One of the new things we began doing from August 2019 is holding monthly quiz contests. This quiz is held during the last seven days of each month with, with special prizes for the first few winners. We recently concluded MH quiz contest October 19th whose theme was on Raspberry Pi and image processing. The next event would be from November 24th to November 30th as MH Quiz Contest November 19th. With, with the idea of state flow and Simulink. For, the every, for every webinar from past to the present and even in future, we will have a webinar quiz on our website. The participation in all our quizzes is completely free. You can attempt as many number of times as you want. To clear the quiz, you must go 75% or more to be able to get MATLAB helper certification. Once you have seen this webinar, I would recommend you to participate in the webinar quiz of Raspberry Pi with MATLAB and Simlink as well and aim to score 75% above. In the next part of this webinar, we have how to download the operating system and how to set up the operating system in our Raspberry Pi. MathWorks provides MathWorks customized Raspbian image for the models of Raspberry Pi till Raspberry Pi 3B plus. And as for Raspberry Pi 4, MathWorks is yet to release its customized operating system. From here on, we have two options. One is to download the MathWorks customized Raspbian image and the other is to customize the existing operating system. For the people using Raspberry Pi model 4 or Raspberry Pi 4 model, I suggest downloading the Raspbian image and customizing it for now as MathWorks is yet to release its customized Raspbian image. To download and set up the operating system, click on add-ons and then click on manage add-ons option from the drop down menu. As you can see, manage add-ons opens add-on manager in a new window. Here you can find list of all the installed support packages. In this new window, search for MATLAB support packages for Raspberry Pi and Simlink support packages for Raspberry Pi. You will find a small setup icon on both of these support packages. Click on the setup icon. As you can see, setup icon opens hardware setup in a new window. Here you can see a drop down menu with options to select model of your Raspberry Pi. You can select your Raspberry Pi model here. If you have Raspberry Pi 4, you will not find your model here. So just click on Raspberry Pi 3B plus and then click on next button to move to the next window. In this window, there are two options that is set up hardware with MathWorks Raspbian image and customize the existing operating system running on my hardware. To set up MathWorks customized Raspbian image, click on the first option and to customize the existing operating system, click on the second option. First, I'll show you steps involved in the setup and later move on to how to customize your operating system. So after selecting the first option, 
click on next which will take us to the new window here in this new window you can see a download link by clicking on which you can download the mathworks customized raspbian image after you have finished your downloading click on next this will take us to the next window in this window it is asking us to provide the location of the downloaded raspbian image we can directly type in the location or we can browse the location i am selecting the location using browse option after selecting the raspbian image you have to click on validate this will verify if the raspbian image you have downloaded is a valid image or not if it is a valid image then it will show a tick mark like this after we get this tick mark we can click on next to move to the next window in this window we are asked about the network settings that is in which mode we are connecting a raspberry pi to the internet we have four options and since i have a wi-fi router i'll go with the second option still it's your wish as you can select any of these four options according to your comfort after we have selected one of these four options click on next to move to the next window in this window we are asked the ssid and password of our wi-fi since i have selected connect to wireless option previously you have to enter both ssid and password and this will create a folder with the details to connect details to connect in the boot files so that our raspberry pi can connect to our wi-fi as soon as it boots up you can also see an option for the ip address in this window that is if you want to manually enter the ip address or you want to take it take the ip address automatically i would suggest you guys to select the manual enter ip address option because to operate raspberry pi from our matlab we need the ip address of our raspberry pi if it automatically decides the ip address then you have to open the wi-fi configuration to check the ip address every time we want to use our raspberry pi after we decide on the ip address click on next to move to the next window in this new window we are asked to insert our micro sd card into our system usually systems don't have an inbuilt micro sd card reader into them so we have to insert the micro sd card into a card reader and then insert it into the system after you have done inserting the micro sd card click on the refresh button so that it can detect the micro sd card if it detects your micro sd card then you can click on the drop down menu to select the drive that has been assigned to the micro sd card when you are done selecting the drive click on the next to move to the next window in this window there is a button to write the image onto the micro sd card but before you click on the write button make sure that the data on the micro sd card is backed up cause clicking on the write button will format the format your sd card and then the write and then the files will be written onto your sd card so so better back up the data after the write bar is filled you see the next button is enabled which was disabled as soon as you clicked on the write button so we can click on this next button to move to the next window in this window we are asked to do three things the first one is to remove our micro sd card and then insert it in the micro sd card slot of our of our raspberry pi and check and place the raspberry pi in the vicinity of our wi-fi router and the final thing is to connect 5 volts power, power supply to our raspberry pi after you connect the 5 volts power supply you see a red led glowing on the raspberry pi indicating the power and a green led known as act led which indicates the sd card activity make sure that the red led is on and the green led is blinking before you move to the next window matlab will try to connect to the raspberry pi and a timer for 180 seconds begins 
in this 180 seconds it, it will try connecting to the raspberry pi and if it fails to do so it will ask you to test the connection manually and try it again once the connection is established we are done with the setup of mathworks customized raspberry image and you can move on to the led part so now let me show you how to customize the existing operating system remember this window yes we first selected the first option over here now let us select the second option that is to customize the existing operating system these steps are for people using raspberry pi 4 and also for the people who have already installed an operating system and don't want to lose the data in it by setting up a new operating system now that we have selected the second option and before we click on the next button we first need to boot our raspberry pi so connect your sd card to the raspberry pi and then connect the raspberry pi to 5 volts power supply and wait for the act led to start blinking after this we can click on next in this window we are asked to enter the device address which is the ip address assigned to our raspberry pi and then device username which is the login id by default it is set to pi and if at all you have changed it then enter the login id that you have given to your raspberry pi and the last thing is your device password after you enter all these details click on the test connection button if you have entered the details correctly then you will see four ticks indicating the matlab was able to interact with our raspberry pi now we can move to the next window by clicking on the next button in this window we can see list of all the libraries and packages that will be downloaded and installed into your raspberry pi we need not do anything in this window so let's just click on next and move to the next window in this window we have an install button when we click on the install button all the libraries and the packages which we have seen earlier will be installed in our raspberry pi after we have done with the installation the bar will be filled and you can notice an installation successful comment over here now click on the next button to move to the next window in this window we can set the state of each peripheral modules these modules have two states one is enable the next one is to disable them if you disable them we can use all the gpio pins present on our board for gpio purpose and if we enable them some of our gpio pins are used by these peripherals and we cannot use them you can enable or disable them it's your wish and don't worry we can enable or disable them later using our matlab commands and we need not come over here to enable or disable them now that we are done with these peripherals click on next to move to the next window in this window we are asked to reboot our raspberry pi for the changes to take effect since i have already installed these packages previously and i'm using my raspberry pi for testing this codes already i'll skip this and click on reboot later for now but for you guys it's better you re you select reboot now option so that the changes you have made will be effective now click on next to move to the next window that's it we are done with customizing the existing operating system remember guys i spoke about the quizzes and contest you can earn certificates by competing in these quizzes to know more look into this small clip get verified certificate of matlab helper on successful completion of webinar quiz contest or course with booking on our portal our digital certificate is e-signed and can be verified for authenticity over the internet the physical certificate can also be delivered within india along with e-signed digital certificate we are done with installing support packages and also set up of operating system now let us move on to some basic commands and later we can use these commands to interface an led 
command to interface your Raspberry Pi with MATLAB is RASPI, which takes in three arguments. As you can see, the three arguments are IP address, device username, and device password. Once you have entered all these, click on enter, and if you see something like this, then you have interfaced MATLAB and Raspberry Pi successfully. This command can be assigned to a variable so that it can be called multiple times using the variable instead of giving the details in the, in the command again and again. Now, let us work our way around the next command that is show pins. This command takes in one argument that is a variable assigned to the Raspberry Pi. When you press enter, this command opens a pin map in a figure window. Did you guys notice P in the show pins command is an uppercase that is all the commands related to Raspberry Pi use camel font and thus the second word starts with a capital letter. This pin map gives us information about various GPIO pins and their positioning on the hardware including all the GPIO pins taken by the peripherals. The next command is configure pin. This command configures a pin to one of the three different modes. The three different modes are input, output, and PWM. This command takes in three arguments. They are variable assigned to your Raspberry Pi, pin number, and the mode to which you want to configure the pin. I am changing the pin number to 23. See, it works now. You can see, I am trying to configure pin 4. But since pin 4 is already being used by one of the peripherals, I am unable, I'm unable to do it because, remember I enabled all the 4 perif peripherals previously. And pin 4 is assigned to one of these peripherals. So I cannot use pin 4. Let's not wait any longer on these commands and move to lighting an LED. To light an LED, connect the LED as shown in the image and in the command window type write digital pin where D and P are capital. This command also takes three arguments. The first argument is a variable assigned to a Raspberry Pi and the second one is a pin number last one is either 1 or 0 where 1 implies high and low implies 0 I'm connecting my LED to pin number 17 so I'm writing the pin number as 17 you can connect the LED to any GPIO pin which are available Now when I click on enter, you can see the LED glowing. Now to turn off the LED, use the same command but in place of 1, give 0. This sets the voltage of the pin to 0, thus turning the LED off. I already wrote the code for blinking the LED, so I'll explain you what it does. 
I started a for loop and connected the LED to 27th pin. First using digital write, digital write pin, I'm gonna light the LED and then wait for one second using pause command. Pause of one command will cause a pause for one second. And then I'll turn the LED off again and wait for one second using the same pause command. Repeat the same for 20 times using the loop and this code will, when executed will blink the LED for 20 times with a time period of 2 seconds. Now you can see the LED blinking. You can also make patterns using the mul using multiple LEDs. When you connect multiple LEDs, like for now, I connected the LEDs to pin number 17, 22, 23, 27. By changing when an LED is lighted and when it's turned off, we can make patterns. Here I used pause command when I light the first LED, and then when I turn it off, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn on the next LED and then use a pause so that it looks as if the LED is flowing forward. So by changing the pause and when the LED is lighted or turned off, you can create multiple patterns. Guys, before we move on to the next part of this webinar, I'd like to tell you about an application known as Parva. Parva is an application-oriented learning environment which focuses on teaching students with a simulate and learn methodology. Through Perva, students and teachers alike can experience learning in a simulation intensive environment where each STEM concept is simulated using real world dynamics. The animation shows navigating the main page of Perva application, which is genuinely intuitive. Just click on the options from the tree on the left to see the information on it displayed on the right. The buttons provided allow for a smooth transit from one page to the next. Individual chapters can be opened by clicking on learn more. Additional information about the application can be accessed by using the menu on the top. The menu also allows for closing the app and hiding the main page as well. We are done with the basics of Raspberry Pi that is lighting an LED using MATLAB. Now let us move on to the next part that is interfacing PIR sensor and acquiring sensor data as input and manipulating the sensor data. What is PIR sensor? PIR sensor is a passive infrared sensor commonly used as motion sensor. This sensor is able to detect a slight variation in IR radiation. A human body emits IR radiation. Thus, when we move in front of this sensor, the sensor detects IR radiation and sends a high output to the Raspberry Pi. First connect the Raspberry Pi and PIR sensor as shown in the circuit diagram. I already wrote the code for PIR sensor so I am going to discuss about how the code works. Since I want to take the data from the sensor multiple times, I put the code in a loop. And in the loop, you can see a new command, read digital pin. This command is used to read digital inputs from external peripherals connected to GPIO pins. Since I'm connecting the PIR sensor to GPIO pins, I'm going to use this command to receive the data from PIR sensor. This command takes in two arguments. The first one is a variable assigned to Raspberry Pi and the next one is pin number. Since I'm connecting the PIR sensor to the 17th pin, I'm giving the arguments as my pi, comma 17. This command is given as condition for an if statement. Thus, when the sensor detects a motion, Raspberry Pi receives an high input, and this high input is given as condition to if statement. Since high is equivalent to one, this becomes if of one, that implies the condition is true, and thus the statements below the if condition are executed. When we move away from the sensor range, the condition becomes false as the PIR sensor gives a low signal 
and thus the statements below the else block are executed. Now I'm going to run this program. Since in the previous program I used 17th pin as output and now I'm using it as input, I got a configuration error message. Let me just configure the pin to input. You can see initially motion is undetected and when I place my hand in front of the sensor the motion is detected and it shows the motion is detected as output. Now we are done with operating the Raspberry Pi using MATLAB and before we move to the next part that is operating the Raspberry Pi using Simulink. Let me just tell you about how to become a Pratt representative to MATLAB helper. Are we a software or a hardware company? You will have to decide for yourself. MATLAB helper is an organization providing programming and simulation expertise. We are assisting in one of the largest and globally used numerical computing environment, MATLAB. With the innovation of our experts, we are continuously growing. We are looking for brand representative who has interest in MATLAB and have the same mission as ours. Represent our brand in your schools, college or organization and be a part of Team MATLAB Helper. For the next part of this webinar, let us open Simlink. Let's go with a blank model. Now first, to light an LED, take a constant block. And a GPIO write block. Connect the constant block to the GPIO write block. Double click on the GPIO write block. This opens up the block parameters. In this parameters, you can see Raspberry Pi model, pin number, and even view pin map option. You can change the pin number and model as per your choice. Since I'm connecting the LED to pin number 23, I'm going to select 23 and then click on OK. Now to execute, first click on Tools and then click on Run on Target Hardware. You can see this opens a configuration parameter window. On the left side, you find Hardware Implementation. Click on it and you see a drop down menu on the right side indicating hardware board. Click on the drop down menu and click on Raspberry Pi and wait for it to load. After it loads, 
you can see two more options below hardware settings. Click on target hardware resources and it expands. In there, you can see board parameters. Click on it and enter the details in the device address, device name and device password. Then click on OK. Now click this drop down menu and click on external. This will enable us to run it on hardware. You can also change the cycles to infinity so that it runs infinitely. You can stop it whenever you want by click on stop simulation button. Now let us click on run. This will take some time as it builds the blocks into the hardware. After it is done, we get a code generation report. Click on OK and you see the simulation is running. You can also see the LED is turned on. It stays on till we stop the simulation. So now let us stop the simulation. Now if you want to blink the same LED with some time period, you can just do this by changing the source block from constant block to sign block. Now when I execute the simulation, you can see that the LED blinks I got an error. Wait, let me fix this. Yep, done. Let me run again. So now you can see the LED is blinking. We are now done with operating an LED with Simlink. Next, we'll be seeing a testimonial video from one of our trainees. Now we reach to the last part of this webinar. Let us do acquisition of PIR sensor data using Simlink. To get the data from the PIR sensor, I already made a simulation. I'll start by explaining the blocks. First, I took a GPIO read block and then connected it to a scope. Scope is used as a display over here so that it displays the output as a graph. To see the output onto the scope, 
first we need to build the model and also log the signal. Now let us run this simulation. Now we got the code generation report and now the simulation is running. See, when I place my hand in front of the PIR sensor, it gives a high output. So we are seeing and one output in the graph. And when I remove my hand, the output from the PIR sensor changes to zero. As you can see in the scope, it's a bit slow when you are using it on the scope. So the out output changes with a slight delay. Okay guys, we reached the end of today's webinar. Meet you guys with more content in the next webinar. And do join us in the live interactive session and attempt the webinar quiz now. Thank you. Hey everyone, did you enjoy this webinar on Raspberry Pi with MATLAB and Simlink? Well, I'm here to increase your joy one notch ahead. I, along with my team, will be doing a webinar which would surely perk your curiosity. We always get fascinated while thinking of the technology domain and continuously improving cameras and image qualities of today's time. So, we at MATLAB Helper have decided to organize a webinar on image enhancement with MATLAB on 16 November 2019. Looking forward for your participation in the webinar. Be there. Learn about applications of enhancement algorithms such as adaptive median filter, morphological operation, histogram equalization, and contrast adjustment on medical images like X-ray, MRI, and iris scans. Also, follow step-by-step -step instruction on how to create their MATLAB application. Don't miss this event, and to know more, visit our website.